Spanish translation so for me I'm happy that uh, people understand I put some qualities in you and uh, I don't take it for granted but to say that uh, we're quite happy that we're part of the journey so far we have um, you taking a number of reforms and insecurity actually topped the list we know that this has been a very huge challenge and a sad commentary for the FCT and uh, you have said so yourself that you need to uh, do a number of things actually to change the narrative. I actually went a few days ago to Gwagwalada and um, other area councils and I witnessed for myself uh, what is going on, the spate of killings and kidnappings. As a matter of fact, a few days ago, uh, I was told that uh, someone has been keeping tabs and then he mentioned about 100 people being killed in just the space of one month. And then um, they are wondering what the minister is doing. I know you have talked a lot about this. Have you been receiving security reports from the area council chair? Uh, because, of course, because we don't want to have our security council meetings, which also the area council chairman are members of the FCT security council. But let me say something clear. The insecurity is not peculiar to FCT. Of course, before now, uh, you must be aware that so many states have complained about kidnapping, so many states have complained about banditry. So when people say uh, FCT are safe, it is only peculiar. And I also don't know where we have this report where over 100 people have been killed. And that is not a, 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 a terrible report. You see, when you say 100 people, who are these 100 people that were killed? Where and where were they killed? Some people exaggerate some of these numbers. I'm not saying that one or two persons may not have been killed, but to say that 100 people were killed within the board, that is not correct. We must have to publish your settings with facts and figures. As I came aboard, of course, like you know, one of the priorities of the, uh, this, uh, this administration of Tudibu is security, protection of life and property. Of course, no government can be, uh, can be serious if you cannot protect uh, life and property. And that is why, for us, we have to key in to see how we can reduce the level of uh, insecurity in uh, FCT. <clears throat> One of the things we did, first of all, was when we summoned uh, the security uh, council and said, hey, we are getting a lot of reports about kidnappings here, about one child here, What's really going on? What's the problem? Of course, they also have to complain about uh, not having a lot of support. I said, well, that can be a problem. Ours is to give you the necessary logistics. Yours is to make sure that you take on to their, wherever they are, their hideouts or whatever, not wait to when these things have happened. And I can tell you, in most cases, we don't really let the public know what and what have been done. I can tell you the security agencies have talked quite a lot. If not, by now, FCT will be a different uh, thing. One of the areas we identified, you look at FCT, it's at the center. You have uh, Niger State, you have Kogi State, you have Nasawa State, you have Kaduna State. So, and if you check these four states, these four states are states that everybody can say, from time to time, banditry, criminality. So when they hit probably in Niger, they run into Abuja. When they hit probably in Kugi, they run into Abuja. So it's like the center, take it for these four states. I would discover that most of the areas are, they stay are shanties, uncompleted uh, buildings. And that was one of the reasons why we can say, look, we cannot allow these uncompleted buildings where criminals have taken to be their place of abode. And so many people do not look at it from a security angle. Now, if a criminal commits and you have nowhere you can identify, this is where you can face the criminal. It becomes a problem. So when we try to say, bring down all these uncompleted buildings, who have turned to shanties, they have nowhere to hide. And they say, look, we have been identified. That is where we are. So they take off. Or sometimes they have been apprehended. We also said that the security men have also complained about 
no vehicles and this and that. And we have said, look, that shouldn't be a problem. We are going to provide all you need to fight and fight all the insecurity in FCT. Just last week, we set up a joint tax force on uh, uh, border, uh, uh, borders, uh, those states that will have borders, and then this so-called one chance. Uh, joint security task force, including the SSS, the police, the army, the navy, and they have identified the way they are going to operate. In that case, it's not what I'm going to tell the public. This will be the modus operandi. But to tell you that we are concerned, that's why we have to uh, set up this joint tax force for the one chance and for the border crimes. And they have identified in some of these border areas where these criminals are. And so they have come up with strategies on how they are going to confront uh, them. Again, uh, you see a lot of uh, illegal border parks. Some of them operate these illegal uh, border parks. And in our society, when one government comes up with a policy that look, we can't allow some of these illegal motor parks. People will come up to say, oh, well, the, the, the economy is hard, things are tough, but nobody wants to look at the foreign security implication because we cannot ask who are these people. And so when you clamp on them, clamp down on them, uh, you will see some kind of people, uh, oh, that you, are, you don't want people to survive. We know you should survive, but not at the risk of uh, committing a crime. So we're also trying to shut down most of these illegal uh, motorbikes. So these are some steps we have taken to reduce the level of uh, crime in the city. Of course, if the city is not safe, then we have a problem. But you can comparatively say today what it was it's not what it is. And we believe that by the time we uh, provide all these logistics to security agencies, you will attest to the fact that we can really say freely we were saving a uh, FCT. But it's a priority that we cannot compromise at all. Okay, okay. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to this issue of insecurity while you're dwelling on because it appears you're already unveiling some of the master plan that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, the worries of many people in some of these areas that you may want to address is the plan for resettlement. Is this, some will say this is like a notice to leave Abuja and uh, so what's your plan for the people who live in some of these border towns who probably can't you know, fit into what we call the master plan? Well, I, you know this issue of resettlement for me, it has become a fraud. No, no respect. Uh, as at the time the FCT law was promulgated, and you know that most of the indigenous were settled. Now some of them refused to move out. I know government when it takes time, you come up that oh we have not been the uh, the settled government said they will settle us. Again, the fall in the civil service, where you will uh, the, the the those who are in charge will say look. These people have been sent up for years. Can we have the documents? The documents are not there. And so the people now will legitimate claim that they have not been uh, sent up. You can't believe it. Even in Asokoro here and in Matama, would you believe that people are still claiming as indigenous inside Asokoro that they have not been uh, sent up? So when you say those that, okay. Look at what, what we're doing now. Uh, the second runway by the Ministry of Aviation, the FCT acquired the land for the second runway before I came on board. Now, that runway, which I think today, the, the flagging of today, now that runway was to be done within one year, and money was already and paid to the contractor the issue of settlement. Normally, it is uh, FCD that acquires land for government agencies. Well, all land belongs to the FCD. Ministry of Salvation went on their own to 
to do valuation that government will pay over 2 point something billion naira. And that's this and listen, how can you? This is above what you normally pay. We can't pay more than 800 or something uh, million. But if we do that, then you are going to cause crisis when it comes to other communities. And so that project was stopped until we came on board. And then they talk about the court about the community and you to them. I said, yes. We went in there and we solved the problem and they have been resettled to another area. Yeah. So there's nowhere government will go and do something and it affects the communities and government will not pay for their resettlement. So when you hear these issues of resettlement comes from today, tomorrow, there's so many schemes, scams, sorry, going on. And we have to be careful because they have used this to always see how they can, uh, you know, defund the uh, government. So how porous does it make the city, given that we have a, this um, huge urban rural drift? Well, it's, it, it's a, you're talking about conjecture. And that's why we are saying that, look, we are not only going to now concentrate in the city, we are also going to move towards the other area councils so that that encouragement of leaving the area councils to come to the city will no longer be there. And where are people moving? Because no infrastructure, no roads. And that's why Mr. President has directed us that, look, as part of the emergency, what we are doing now, uh, we are doing that. We have taken each area council to provide the number of routes that within the next eight, nine months, we must have to do it so that people can feel comfortable that our development is now moving towards the area councils, not only concentrated. And two, we are going to open up other districts. I found that, which is very unfortunate, that the arrangement made before now to open up districts and have a mass housing was as I, did, I was against the government. How would the government provide infrastructure and develop the district? And now you call an independent developer to come and build and sell. And the issue is that who owns the land? The government. Who provides infrastructure? The government. So how can you now say, look, you come and build house and sell and make money without government benefiting from anything? No, it will be like a partnership. I'm going to provide the land. You bring your fund to provide the services and then build. Then we we'll share it. Probably 70 30, as the case may, may be. So the arrangement was skewed against government. And you also find out a situation where even the contracts for the development of the infrastructure, the contract is awarded at the cost of 20 billion naira. And the next one year, it becomes 140 billion naira. Obviously, that contract won't go on. And that's why you see so many of the, uh, 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 most of the cities that ought to have developed or ought to have opened up, we're not. Okay. Your Excellency, I would like to ask you, you talked about short-term and long-term deliverables yeah. when you took office. Mm -hmm. And then part of the short-term deliverables you talked about is, um, um, you know, the restriction on the ban on Qatar, mm -hmm. the restriction on uh, cattle headers and mm -hmm. all of that. You also um, talked about um, the infrastructure development that would actually be achievable mm -hmm. in the short term. Mm -hmm. Um, recently, you uh, uh, commissioned the rehabilitation and renovation of 135 roads yeah. in Abuja. Yeah. And of course, um, we've also seen you visit um, the metro line, which yeah. of course the president has said he wants to ride on the metro line. Mm. So can you talk us through these short-term and long-term deliverables? Okay. Why are the short-term deliveries, del deliverables very important? Okay. You remember that uh, before now, everybody mm. said Abuja is in darkness. All the street lights are no longer there. Yeah. And, with, and the sanitation, and so well, these are short-term deliverables. You can see today that we cannot say for sure hundred percent we have achieved it, but you can see that an improvement. I find street lights are 
concern. You can also see there are improvement in terms of sanitation. But that does not mean that you have achieved 100 percent. But we're able to show different that look at what it was when we came and see what it is uh, now. And there's still hope that in the next few months we'll be able to say yes, we can now go on that. Yes, we have achieved what we want to achieve. We talk about uh, potholes within the city. I would say, look, we can't allow this. And that was why we came up with the issue of resurfacing so many of the of the roads which I flagged up. In fact, in the next uh, one week, we're also taking the entire Asokoro to the surface, entire Asokoro. But I'm also going back to say, okay, go to my Taman and see the areas that we can take up. Not total construction, they're not too bad, but for a city like this, we don't need to have such much uh, 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 potholes. So these are key few things, uh, short uh, time deliverables, you should be able to say, well, done within this uh, period, and which can attest to the fact. They talk about Okada. Yes. Why have we not um, taken a pair of Okada? Now, what alternative have we provided? Now, you find out that recently, uh, we just got uh, the two billion from Mr. President as a palliative. And um, just this morning, when I came to the office, or as of yesterday, I told the, transport, the Secretary of Transport, we have a lot of buses that are just packed all over. Now you go and tell me how much it's going to cost to put those buses in use. And then we also look at how many of the vehicles we can buy as like Texas Abuja uh, city uh, 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 vehicles. So it will be difficult if you have not provided these vehicles and then the one that is there that the poor people are using you know, I said it should be thrown away. No. So what we are once we get these buses, and we have repaired the old ones, then we'll be able to say, listen, we cannot take you out of this area. We don't need this within the, the city. I'm not saying that you won't have to in the area council. I'm not saying so. You know, when people are to misinterpret, when they say they have not the Kekenape, what I'm saying, entity inside the city. And the, and the motorcycles. But we provide these vehicles that are the alternative to our people. But if you don't do this, it will be difficult for you to say, okay, uh, let everybody get away. You must provide an alternative, particularly as it affects the common, uh, uh, the common man. So that is what we're doing. And I believe that um, in the next few weeks, the procurement process would have, would have been completed. Uh, then the repairs of these our uh, buses would have been uh, completed, and then we bring them out free. So it's, that's what the president said. Look, subsidize the need of people paid. Let it be free transport for, particularly the poor ones who come from very far to work and going back. So that's what that's. I also did not say immediately that all uh, the cattle area will not will not know. That this is all I said. We will not allow, and it cannot be done within one month or two, but it has to do with consultation and talking with people. Let them understand what you are saying. You are not saying that you will not allow cattle inside Abuja. I never said so. I said in the city. The federal capital territory includes the area uh, council. council, right? And so many people went and misinterpreted it and then said, oh, I said, cattle were not allowed in the entire federal capital uh, territory. That is not correct. But what my concern is, look, there's nothing in the city that you will say. Uh, there's no, there's no, there are no grasses or whatever. These are flowers of grass planted for the beauty, for the landscape of the city. How will you allow cattle to come in and begin to destroy those flowers you have uh, uh, planted too. It doesn't look nice, even as foreigners coming. But that to provide areas where they can have, past of them have their food to eat, there's nothing wrong in that. That's my argument, that's my position. But people will always say, look, oh, 
you of course you know politicians <laughs> don't know looking for one uh, loophole or the other to to capitalize to see that you have a confrontation when you're doing it for confrontation so we are we discussing with stakeholders for them to understand why they should support our our position so you haven't started enforcement of that no well, because you have to talk about confrontation very well, and it is not easy. You know, it's not easy if people have different uh, understanding. You know, we're in a country where politicians who do not mean well for the country will find whatever means to see that things don't work out. Religion, ethnicity has always been used as the divisive tools to make sure that things don't work. Take for example, <clears throat> when I was the governor of Iowa State, because of politics, it was all over the social media, all over the country was waging that I demolished a mosque. I'm sure you may, you may remember that uh, uh, situa the, the situation then. I was just wondering, where is this coming from? When was this decision taken? Where was it taken? And I summoned the permanent secretary then to say, well, where, where did you people go to destroy mosque? I said, which mosque? There was no destruction of mosque. That's okay. It had to take the former government of the state who was then the chairman of the Jungle Forum, Dr. Fahimi, to come down to Port Harcourt. And I took him. I said, show me where most was uh, demolished. He said, he shook his head. He shook his head. I said, you see, we have to be careful. Instead of you to talk about how our country is going to move forward, we will always bring in divisive tendencies. You were here when the National Mock uh, Mosque Nightmare came, led by the ESUNUP. You were here when they said, look, the contract awarded to rehabilitate the mosque and the Christian uh, and the Kuriko Center. That was stopped. I said, uh, the executive secretary of uh, FCD, why did you not bring this to our attention? He now said there yeah, that, but the job is going on. The, the, the general secretary of uh, the Supreme uh, Council of, uh, for Islamic Affairs, Prophet Lord, said no, the job is not going on. And I gave him 24 hours. You must go and bring me the fire and tell me why this job is not going on. It's a commitment made, and we must have to pull. But if you read social media this morning, that I have directed him to make sure that the demolition of the most is, 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 that is, people who do not have the interest of this nation at heart. It's unfortunate. And when the SDP, who was, who led delegation came, he told me that, look, these plots, which you have given us notice and time to develop, were not at fault. It was FCD that said, look, the road that you for the southern part will cross at their plots. And so they were waiting for reallocation of land. And I said, what's the position? These are things you, if you don't have the facts, you just go and, oh, he wants to demolish uh, the, the, the property of the, of the, of the, of the uh, 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 Supreme Court for Islamic uh, Affairs. So one thing you didn't clarify was yes. that you give them additional time, but what is the time frame you're looking well, at? Well, 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 you see, first of all, uh, the one that you plot, that you have to plot now, plot 99, 
Um, I said, look, well, what we gave was three months. Uh, but because of the peculiar nature, we may, we will extend it. Because we look at how far they have gone and the, what is their capacity to wish to finish that uh, project. But it's not a general, uh, it's not, does not apply to everybody. It applies to probably uh, the two little but of course, you know, they, uh, they only get money as we, who are believers, contribute. And uh, we don't want to be seen as if we are against any, uh, any group. So uh, I don't want to tell you now to what extent. I will not do that. But all I do that uh, having that appeal to us, we have agreed that we have to extend their own uh, uh, term. Let, uh, let, let us not take you back too much, but to, to exhaust the issues of uh, insecurity that we spoke about and infrastructure. You mentioned the issues of um, uncompleted buildings being havens to criminals. Yeah. Uh, recently, we understand that the FCT says it will soon begin a uh, post development audit of houses in the satellite towns. Uh, in the city area councils. The exercise we understand will take in about 15 you know, satellite towns. Uh, is that the target in terms of you know, uh, having, uh, getting to know exactly what we have in those towns? Uh, what is exactly the direction in terms of this uh, uh, post-development audit uh, that uh, you know, you're embarking on? No, you are, you, are, you are talking about the insecurity. Or you have to remember the post-development audit? The post-development audit, are we looking at uh, just the complete, uh, is it going to take in all the, um, all the infrastructure in terms of the, we were talking about buildings that are, you know, not inhabited and not completed. Are those, uh, is that part of your thinking as well? So, uh, well I want to talk about security first, that completing all the uncompleted uh, buildings. Now this reminds me yesterday, I got to find out that there are so many uncompleted buildings by government, which was a letter that the government has sold out to people, and which is not correct. The, the other family, which is not correct. I directed the, those consigned that let me see the documentation of the properties of government that are sold. And those that have not moved, those are the foundation level, those have moved and then they've just abandoned it and said it has been sold, which has not been sold. Those areas too have been taken over by miscreants and criminals. So our intention, one, not allow them to continue to stay in those areas. Two, complete those buildings and then give it out to um, Nigerians. And that, of course, will help in increasing the housing uh, 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 opportunities for our, our people. So you have, you have property littered left trans center outside the city, a satellite uh, town, uncompleted. So if you can come up genuinely, that's okay, you have no force to do this. Genuinely, people are willing to take over the place and complete for themselves. But now where you sit down and say it has been given out, not that you're not knowing that you're only keeping it for your own self and then sell to people. And again, what we have found out too some of these so-called houses they said have given out, they are only waiting for government to come and provide the infrastructure. Who's on the top? So servants in the in the place. And at the end of the day, who's losing? Government is losing. So for us. You cannot say you want to stop your security, you want to reduce your security if you don't expand development to the area councils. What do you want to do about what you, you just um, observed about the civil service? Well, that's a different uh, issue. 
I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Mind you, mind you, the discipline of civil servants is not within by powers. And that's why, luckily, we're going to be having a civil service uh, uh, commission. There are steps, there are processes. I'm not saying we do respect that it is only civil service. I'm not using for example because they are like permanent staff. That does not mean they are not politicians who are also involved. So that you understand me very well. And when you are taking decisions that will affect, they come up and raise propaganda and carry different stories. But you wouldn't know that these stories is just for their own uh, interest because they are to be affected. My colleague said about this issue of um, you have already spent two months and it's almost three months when you give that order. Yes. You know, some have said, pardon my local yes. parlance, yes. says initial gragra. When you say three months, do your building, all this will be revoked. Now it's one month to that three months. You are giving concession to these religious bodies, like you've mentioned. But some who may not have the opportunity to reach out to you to explain their dilemma because you distinguished that these people have money. They should build on these things. What's your work to them? Is the three months still on course? You will say that it has taken one month. It's not correct. If you say I've said two months, remember when I came, I said, look, first of all, for those who have not developed the plus of land given to them, that we have to revoke and which we have revoked. We also say that those who have, but have started the processes of submitting their building uh, plans. Sometimes too, they submit, but it takes the development control sometimes to approve the building plan. And I said, in such cases, you cannot lay the, the whole blame on them. Part of the blame will also go to development uh, control. So when I say look, development control, you have this period to clear all the backlogs of those who have applied and have not gotten their building uh, plans. Those who have gotten their building plans, you have no choice. But within the next three months, you must have to start uh, uh, something to show that you are serious. But I can tell you how Nigerians are. That may announcement alone Go and see those who have had uh, building uh, approvals. They're all over the place building. That's Nigeria for you. So you would have asked, if we did not threaten, it means nothing would have uh, happened. And don't say, when people say initial gara gara, they know the kind of person they are talking about, not to me. They know the group of people, they know that initial gara 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 for what? Like you may say, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do. What I will not do, I will not do it. So if you want to test whether we have the will to do what we have said we are going to do, just try. We have advertised that, look, go and pay a grand rent, right? Now two weeks, if you don't pay a grand rent, we will reform. It's not what I'm saying. Today we have given another two weeks for those who have not complied, right? If this two weeks passes, don't say, like you said, it's a greater. We have given two weeks, nothing will happen. We did not, we have given another two weeks, nothing will happen. But I can tell you something will happen. And then you will see complaints. They will be sending people to you. Or oh, talk to him. There's nothing to talk to me. I mean, simple compliance. It's a covenant you have with government for government to have given you that place. That, that every year, this amount of money should be paid. How much is it? Check all this year for example, some 100 or something thousand naira a year. Some 50 something thousand naira a year. And then you will not comply for more than 10 years because nothing will happen. 
happening. It's, it's, I've never seen it. I've never seen a country like this where nobody thinks that something will go. I've only told you that. The mere fact that nothing happened yesterday does not mean that nothing will happen today. The mere fact that nothing happens today does not mean that nothing will happen uh, tomorrow. Don't ever you take it for granted. As far as I'm concerned, with the opportunity I have as the Minister of FCT, everything I say, I will make sure I do it. Everything I have told them, I'm going to do it because I know it's for the interest of the FCT. It's not for my own personal interest. I, 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 look, before I came, would you have said that there's any control going on anywhere? Before I came, were there contractors anywhere? Now, I came. What happened? That the contractors are back. I mean, it's simple. What happened that the contractors are back? Why are they not paid? What's this money here for? I don't know. Oh, language, or oh, this budget, this, this, this budget. No, no, no. I don't like I don't hear that grammar. I don't hear that. We must have to do the financial engineering. These contractors must go back to site. Look at the, the resident of vice president. Awarded in 2010. Do you know what that means? Do you know the embarrassment? 2010. For the official residence of the vice president. This is 13 good years. <laughs> uncompleted. At how much? 7 billion naira 2010. They abandoned. Now go and see the variation just bring us out for. For 13 good years. I don't know how in my state as a governor, how anybody would tell me that I'll do a project for seven years, for two years, three years. How? How? No project, no project when I know there's no financial backing. It is not to satisfy people. And when I came on board, I made sure that, look, even projects that were awarded by the previous government, I never abandoned them. Because the government is a continuum. It is public funds. And I made sure I acknowledged that this project was started by the previous government, but we have no choice, but to complete the project. And that's what we are doing now, as directed by Mr. President. We're not going for any new project just because, except when it is very, very necessary. Except when it is very, very necessary. And that's the difference we're trying to show. Okay. Your Excellency, uh, uh, staying with the abandoned project, you visited the Millennium Tower. Yes. Uh, of course, it's one of those projects that have taken years and up till now for yet to see any meaningful progress with that project until you came on board and, you know, you. You, part of what you proposed was a partnership, private and a pu a public partnership to see how um, the Millennium Tower can, uh, you know, kick off. And then, of course, it will be of use to uh, President of Abuja. But I would like to ask you, um, a handful of abandoned projects, how do you intend to fund all of these projects? As of yesterday, of all the projects, the total the debt, 1.3 trillion Naira equivalent. Naira. Dollar. About 1.6 billion, uh, 1.6 million dollars. Million dollars. Euro. About 94,000 euro. Right? Like I said, you mentioned this billion on towers. I hope you have an idea when that project was awarded. Fantastic project to make a, project, a city a city. If that project is completed, it is going to change the entire landscape of Abuja. It has everything. But if I tell you the initial cost and to what it is now, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. 
I've never seen where a country that believes in variation, variation, variation. That cost was about something billion. It got to 50 something billion. As of 2020, the salary of no objection, 114 billion. 2020. That even certificate has not been presented to FEC. We are trying to, we are, we are looking at the uh, memos to Central Federal Council as against Monday to approve for some projects that they have had uh, side of no objection. So when they brought this matter, 2020, side of no objection, 114. This is three years. You want me to go and present such? I, I, I will not do that. You better write back to the BB to cancel that and give you a new certificate of uh, no objection. Now, one of the things I've, I feel so happy today is what the president has done to see how we can leverage and uh, confront these so many abandoned uh, projects. How do you leverage? Is by bringing that out of this single treasury account. If Mr. President does not want development, he will have continued with other governments have done. Yes, he will have continued. When he saw the advantages, that look, this will help the FCT to leverage on funds and then tackle these issues of uncompleted or uh, abandoned uh, projects. Now, what that means is that. We can leverage on a wider financial market. I need 500 billion naira to the, the National Assembly. Take, for example, in our next budgeting system for our statutory uh, 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 budget to the IGR. But I don't have the money. Central Bank cannot give us money. And I can't go to the bank and give us the same. How can we give you? And what will they use to pay back? So the advantage we have now that we can now bank with commercial bank, right? And so listen, we need five hundred billion to pay four years as the case may be. What is our agile base? Probably say maybe twenty billion, for example. It's okay. Monthly. Yes, monthly. It's okay. Bank. Why not collect 10 billion every month? For four years. To recover the money I've given to, to us to carry out projects. We still have 10 billion to do other things. But you could imagine what would have happened with the 500 billion you have. In that case, we are talking about one point something trillion, assuming. Now you have been able to cut it almost at fifty percent. Simple. And if it's not done that way, if you like, stay here for sixteen years as FCT minister, it can so it can work. Because no bank will give you money without uh, uh, a collateral. I can tell you, since the president removed for single treasury account, I can tell you the amount of pressure that banks have been putting here. Yesterday, I saw a letter from the bank offering us to give over 150 billion. <laughs> I was laughing. I've not even made any request to not just have there now. That is to tell you. And it takes leadership, political leadership, political will to have seen the merits of pulling out of this in order for it to leverage on finances to develop FCT. You weren't worried about dissenting voices? What, what dissenting voices? Those who don't want things to move will always not want things to move. You see, it's a problem the problem people have. 
two months ago, we may be angry. They complain, you have a minister, oh, he's, uh, he's weak, he's not a man. They complain, you have this minister, oh, he's too tough, he does not, you know, there's nothing you do that people will not come. What's the same? The, the, the anger is that they're going to see development. And why should you come, why should you be one a minister serving under uh, the Aswadi's uh, government? It's not that they don't, it's that why should they be? What about the concern of the rationale behind the TSA, the idea of transparency? What is, what is transparency there? We, we, are, we are not even agent of federal government. So do you have a self-regulatory No, yes. <laughs> like I said now, what is to look? To block loopholes of government funds. We don't collect revenue from federal government, do we? We don't. Two, the national budget comes through gifts. It's not, it's too online. But the money is being paid. The, so it has nothing to say, it will not show transparency. No, no, it's not correct. What's the transparency here? You are getting money through the approval of National Assembly. Right? To the approval of National uh, okay. Assembly. You must go for procurement. Right? You must go for procurement. The law has said what percentage you must pay as mobilization, which you must comply with before you're not of an interim certificate about the work, work done. My happiness is that, look, and I don't know what anybody may say, it depends on what you have in mind. Since I have the confidence of Mr. President to do this work, you will see the difference that Mr. President did not make a mistake in allowing us to participate in his administration. It's not like film. You will see it clearly from next year what's going on. Just good. I, I call Jules Baker General and say, go back to your site. CGC, go back to your site. Gilmore, go back to your site. Cetra, go, go back to your site. And I said, look, can you free the projects before the one year of Mr. President? He said, yes. You are sure? Yes. Can you commit yourself? Yes. Take the money. All I want is people are happy that under Mr. President's administration, Abuja has taken a different dimension. That is just what I'm trying to do, what we're trying to do. Make people to be happy. Give them back that new hope. They have lost hope since. Now that hope has, look, we are now come, we, are, we can now believe, yes, there will be development in FCT. And it is clear, a man who has foresight, a man who has foresight, how can they do, how will we assess funds? Look at the loans. They said, uh, FCT took for the Metro Line to China loan and this. Have we paid our own counterpart from? Where are we going to get the, the foreign exchange from? Who are we going to get it from? Two. The, 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 the budget has also been funded. Yes, sir. Uh, Gloria alluded to something about civil service, I mean civil servants. Yeah. You said you, you, will keep, you won't let the cat out of the bag. But we would hope that, uh, you know, we'll just dip into the bag a little bit. Uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, the FCT Civil Service Commission is supposed to come on stream. Uh, the joint uh, action committee members of the joint action committee said this has been in the works for over 20 years. Yes. How are you able to push this over the line in two months? It's not about me, it's about the president. It's about the president. You see, you, you understand the system. When I went to him, look, this law has been there. It's just implementation. Initially, I thought, because he posed the question, I thought, he was not going to approve it. Not knowing that he wanted me to explain more. And I said, sir, you, have, you need to hope agenda. 
What is the hope we are giving them now? What is the hope? You said you didn't need the hope agenda. These people cannot have career progression. These people have lost hope. You can imagine where you want to be a judge. And your aim is to get to the Supreme Court, which is the apex. You are a civil servant. Your aim is to get to the permanent secretary, which is the highest. But you are stultified. I can't grow. I will only end as a director and go. Would there be commitment? Would there be that passion for the job you are doing? And he laughed. The brother laughed. He said, this is what we are talking about. And look at the reaction from the civil servants. Oh, I can be a permanent secretary now. I can be a permanent secretary. If I don't, no, not because there was no uh, hope. Maybe it didn't get to my own tongue. But civil servants of the FCT cannot say, I'm going to work hard. My idea, my intention is to be the permanent secretary. There's nothing you can do in life. That's a look, giving somebody hope. And that's what Mr. President did to bring back the hope. Don't worry, your hopes are not shattered. No, they're not shattered. No, I will not allow it. Go and implement this law. If there are challenges, we'll see that. But go and implement the law. To bring back the hope of those who have lost hope. That is leadership. That is political will. There are those who may not be happy about it, who have time to scuttle it for their own selfish interest. I can tell you something. There are directors here who are senior to the department that they posted here. Yes. There are directors. Now they are senior director under the office of permanent secretary. But, but what was the rationale behind that before now? You see, when people don't want to do the right thing, everybody knows that, look, okay, you see how FCT Police Command, why are we having FCT Police Command? FCT is supposed to be seen as a state. We're having area councils. Do you know what I mean? FCT employs people here. The, the civil servants are not brought from the ministry down here, no? No. So, so many people think that, oh, there are those who are at the top there. If we allow these our powers, I've been taking a, a, what powers? It's not about you. It's about the institution. How to make it work. It's not, oh, I would have been the one that would have posted a power sector to that place. That is all. Nothing more. And that's a crisis. And for me, that action taken by Mr. President, I will give all my best to actualize the renewed hope. Because what I like in life is I'm working with somebody whom I know is committed to the work, whom I know that wants to achieve it. And not giving excuses. I've been, I've, I mean, I can look at you, I can see whether you are serious in this or not. These three things, but on, in one day, a whole F city has no well, no women have no role to play. You have Monday secretary for this, Monday secretary for that, but nobody talks about women. And part of this. Priority area is inclusivity. Don't exclude people, women, not only women, youth, don't. And he didn't waste time. We made a memo to him. There's a need to have mandatory for women. Approved.
look at the joy in women. Why won't you be happy? That we can now talk about women being involved in what happens in the FCT. Unlike what it used to be. So, it is, everybody can see the signs in FCT that uh, things are going to be better. Things are going to be better. Sophie, even these signs are talking about, uh, they say that, of course, you've gained more traction in, the, in terms of developing you know, the city and making FCT more autonomous. Are you looking at the area of um, the mayoralty, the FCT? I've got, that's not a problem. It's not the issue of mayoralty. It's the issue of, you can have mayoralty, but then the, you may not be able to move the, the, the city. That is not the point. The point for me is having the advantage of the opportunity to develop the, the city. It is not, you see, what makes a city is not because of the name. It's not because of the name. After all, we have created states, yes. We can count. How many states have created for so many years? Yes. What is the level of uh, development? Development is you. What do you have? What commitment? What passion? It is not about the nomenclature. I was council chairman, and it was obvious, it was seen. And everybody saw development in that local government. Everybody saw it. It is not a question of whether uh, some people tell you we don't have money. It's not that. No money is enough everywhere. No money is enough. The little you have, you should be able to make use of it. And you see the people would know that. Oh, yes, we are, we are happy. We have seen the $10,000 that Nara he has gotten. He has spent not less than eight Nara. And we can see it. And that is what we want to say in FCT. If now the president has given us opportunity, for us to have access to funds, can we see the development? Can we see the infrastructure? That's what we're talking about. That's what Nigerians should say. President has done this. Have given you this opportunity? Can we now begin to see the development, the changes in FCT? And that's what we're trying to say. The idea of naysayers, you know, I don't know whether you're aware, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria have even written to say that uh, they want to question the rationale behind the Mandate Secretary for Women Affairs Secretariat. And part of the things they mentioned, coincidentally you even talked about it, that why women? Is it a political patronage that this happened a few days after you visited okay. the First Lady? I'm just putting it out there for okay. you to respond. Okay. And for them, they believe that... Uh, this should be about family affairs, that women are practically doing it, well. It, 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 let, 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 let me tell you, I've been in governance. I've been in government. I'm not uh, those who don't sit down. And so because I visited the First Lady, I mean, that was a political patronage. You see, it's, 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 we take things out of context. I have a right to visit the first list. We want to partner with you. I want to make a memo. Because in your own course of carrying out your activities, how do you, do you relate with the women of the FCT? And she said, look, that would be wonderful if you can if people can do that. She never called me. To say one day, no, people should, uh, people should stop. That's why I said in Nigeria, what we did, is it good or not? It's not whether you saw so-so person. I mean, let us stop chasing uh, shadows. This action taken, if it is good, and would help to include the women in the affairs of government, why not acknowledge it and forget where the idea came from? Assuming though not considering, assuming though not considering that the idea came from the first lady and it is a positive thing, why not be happy? Why would he say, oh, because it came from the first uh, lady? What kind of, you see, these are the things I don't like to listen to it. 
I don't even hear about it. I don't give opportunity for anybody to even tell me about it. Because it doesn't matter. I'm focused. This thing will it help? In which way will it help? That is our concern. Forget about who brought the idea. Talk about the relevance of the idea and how impactful it will be. My enemy, I can listen to my enemy talking. And as a, he has made a point. I take that point and go and walk. It doesn't matter because it came out from my political uh, enemy. If that point was, is going to help me to achieve whatever I'm going to achieve, I add it. After all, when they are me, would they know where I got it from? Did they, would, they know, would they know where I got it from? No. The matter of fact, I have political enemy uh, opponent does not mean that they have no good ideas. I may not go directly to them, but I can watch them, monitor them, and take the good ones and add to the one I have and move on. And they'll be thinking, how did you come about it? This was the same thing I have in my mind. I just laugh, I laugh at you. I move on. So Nigeria should take about the relevance, not the source. Honorable Minister, I will, I will still told the line of my colleague. Um, there are also those who believe that um, there are allegations, actually, that the idea behind revoking lands and all of that is um, to suit your interest. By suiting your interest, uh, I mean they are suggesting yeah. that um, you want to relocate or reallocate those piece of land to your associates. How would you respond to that? Is it what they did? They are suggesting probably what they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I tell you I listen to those things, I'm going to tell you lies. They gave you land 15 years, 7 years, 10 years to develop, to make the city to look fine. Build. You abandoned it. It became a land uh, speculator. Land that government gave you to develop the city for over 10 years, and then you want to sell 3.4 billion, 4 billion, and then criminals have taken over the place. And then I come to say, Look, we can't accept this. If you don't want to develop it, too bad. We'll give it to those who want to develop. Because uh, they are my friends, so what? Assuming they are my friends, are they not Nigerians? Who will intimidate me by you are doing it to give it to a friend? Who will do that? Who is going to listen to that uh, garbage? I'm not interested in that. I mean, they should not, uh, those uh, politicians, uh, they, are, uh, they are going to say something, then they'll be shaking. You know, they are criticizing me that uh, I want to give it to my friends. I should give it to my enemies. I should give it to uh, you. you That's exactly what the Orifai said then. Uh, uh, look, what, uh, if, uh, if I give it to my friends, they don't develop it, I take it away. I, I'm not going to be afraid of anybody. So, all those carrying those rumors are these political losers who are afraid of their shadow. You know, one thing I can tell you about this politics. If you can face me in the battle, you go back, you go behind to create rumors. <laughs> you understand me? To your propaganda. That's what they do. Because there's nothing to talk about the uh, week again. There's nothing to talk about week. What will you say now? Tell me what you, what will anybody say that they have not said? We can say ethnic, we can say religious disease, we can say this, we can say that. And they all lost all, all, they lost all, all, they lost all. So they have nothing to say here. They just go uh, sell one thing to the press. This is what he's doing. I'm going to do what's right. If you like, say whatever you want to say. The person who appointed me to be here is the person I know that I look at him. Is he comfortable? Is he happy with what I'm doing? That's, that's how I operate. I don't operate by gossip, what they said. 
Well, what my principal is happy with the job I'm doing. Who, who gave me the opportunity? That's all for me. Even if it means you stepping on toes. No, govern you can't do governance without stepping on toes. Then you are not prepared for it. You are not prepared for it. I'm not, uh, I don't care anybody, no. In government, you must be somebody who will take a decision. Decision must not be suitable to everybody. No, no. There are decisions I have taken here, and people will come to meet me. I say, please. I'm not here to be, not to take a decision. I'm here to take a decision. And I believe the decision I've taken is the right one. And so I have to do it. Some people come and tell me, you know, you have to be careful. Abu has not tell you what I say, look, 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 look. Please, 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 please. Take this your advice. I'm aware that Abuja is not reversed, that's why it's called Abuja. And that's why reversed is called uh, reversed. Supervising over the territory of a place, what is, what, what is there? What is different? Being able to say that things must be done in the right way, what is wrong with that? Being able to stop people of, look, let me tell you something. I was the council chairman, remember? Remember, I was the council chairman. And one of the most, one of the most important local government in Nigeria. So I have that to say what's I moved to the chief of staff, so I know. I've been a minister, I know. I went back to one of the most known states in Nigeria. So I know. There's no amount of blackmail trying to say whatever, that was changing. No, 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 I know. I know the gimmicks. I know it. So, my target is what did Mr. President say he wants? This is what he wants for FCT. He wants FCT to look like a city compared to other cities in the world. He wants people of FCT to feel happy that there is a government to have confidence in his administration. It is my duty to make people, yes, believe in him. Whatever he does, he will do through us. I went to somewhere, and where this, uh, is it Gizbo? Yes, that you know, road. I went there, the whole people came out. And the security men were trying to push. I said, what are, you, what, what are you pushing them? They said, look, they've never seen a minister come out like this to come and talk to. Look at their feeling. But what is it? What is so important that hey, you go out and talk to them to have the confidence that, look, we are going to complete this road? And I told you we are going to complete the road. Have that confidence. Support us. We'll achieve it. And it will be for your own benefit. But if you don't, they will say, it's a lie. Very soon now, they will, they will abandon the, the road. Nothing gives the people that happiness, that you relate with them. It is part of your job to communicate with them. Not only communicating by media only, no. One on one, too. Let them see you. And so, oh, this thing we are seeing, we are seeing here on television, is it correct? So he had repeated it here. It gives you that confidence. And so, FCT will not have problem with the administration of Ahmed uh, uh, No, no, no. It is my duty to make them happy. I'm not, like I have said, I don't know who is party A, who is party B. I don't know who is ethnic one, ethnic two. I don't know who is religious ten or this. I don't know that. All I know, the happiness of the people of uh, FCT. So talk about making all, everybody happy, including your workers. Uh, uh, recently you said the monthly wage bill, you know, uh, the FCT stands at about 8 billion. That's not factoring in uh, this new wage increase by the current administration. So my, my question would be, are you seeing it as an albatross or an opportunity you know, in your quest to, you know, have, ensure an healthy, I mean, healthy balance 
between the capital and the current expenditure in your budget? Of I course, of course. This was what I did in rivers. I said I was going to do 70 30. Oh, heaven will fall as a heaven would not fall. Heaven will be at peace. But we want development. Then all these irrelevant things we are talking about. As I became a uh, uh, minister, they brought me my entire to bed. I said, What is this? Is it so? What is this? I said, Think about it. What? What is that? Free for your disease. Unnecessary. Have you seen the budgeting system? What they put in the current? Buying a computer every year? Oh my God. It's, it's, it's. This is I will channel it to projects, to development. That's what the people want to see. Look at when I came, I said, City, a billion dollars, 7.9, which is a billion. My state was a salary bill. As big as we are, no. Something fundamentally wrong somewhere. That's okay. Out of protest, I said, we pay. However, I must go into retail finance. How huh? is FCT? As small as we are, spending 8 billion naira as a salary in the month. Two. Now you have seen the wage uh, increase. At the end of the day, where would you get the money from? Sometimes the further the allocation for FCT, sometimes it's not get more than eight, 8 billion. So you have to use the idea to make up. But that again, you would, because if you're a serious person, if you, 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 you have, you see, it will work like a billion naira, a salary for FCT. It may be correct, but I really want to see how. I want to be convinced the population, the number of civil servants in FCT that will have that get to, that will go up to that level, I want to see. If it is so, so be it. But I'm not going to just see the paper. No, I want to really uh, verify. No, no, I, I, as much as you said that uh, you don't mind listening to the voice of the opposition, you know, one of the things that uh, you probably will help us to put in right context is some have said that this idea of minister of the FCT you know, taking care of the civil servants appears very novel. Uh, that while you were in River State, Mr. Wicke was known as Mr. Project. In fact, let me add your word, quality yeah. project. Yeah. You know, yeah. but is this an improvement of what you used to do? Because this one is vis-a-vis -vis the welfare of the civil servants and also building Abuja. What no. was your story no. like in No, that is not correct. Let me just tell you, you know, people can I'm not saying that the, the welfare services should not be taken. I'm not saying so. I challenge anybody as governor of Rivers, have you ever had since I left office that Rivers State was indebted to social amount of money? I challenge anybody. I challenge anybody. Have you ever had that said that that um, um, personnel went on strike. No, no, it is not correct. I implemented the, the minimum wage. Yes, I did. The problem I had with the union was the the chairman who wanted to use the money as a as a political tool. That's why he went around for Labour Party to be governor. I'm, they, they, I will fail her. Yes, very well. Didn't you think it up to 3,000 votes? You thought that the election is a... Uh, general election is a labor you don't... Uh, election. She saw it there. I've never had a problem. I built secretariat for another labor congress. I built secretariat
for trade union congress. It has never happened. I have always taken care of the welfare of the world. Salaries are paid on time. What welfare do you want? That we should leave development of the state and then put everything for you. You want to do this program, you want to do that program, unnecessary programs. You don't want to go to your community. You don't want the schools in your community to be in good condition. You don't want good health facilities. Nobody is saying that. Look, and whether you agree or not, if you spend 70% of your funds to the current, that country will never develop. What are talking about the development of the economy? How will the economy develop when there are no basic infrastructure? How? The infrastructure that stimulates the economy is capital intensive. You want the economy to grow, you don't want the rail line, you don't want the flyovers, you don't want the, 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 the highways. You should just put the money in buying computers every year. Put the money, we are going for training in the UK, this and that. Of what relevance is that training? General training, not specific training. Where you can bring back something to, to say, look, this is what I learned on this particular area. We just begin to sign our money for any change and travel. Then you come back, you go for shopping, you come back. Some some people will not attend the stadium and sign them and go back. I mean, what kind of system is that? Yeah, the that you're pushing for this current uh, civil servants in FCT too. If I do what? the idea of promotion too, what was that? What was the report like? Well, why would it not be? I mean, when you do for the promotion, they give you promotion. It's part of the the, 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 the happiness. Yes. If you are not promoted, how will you be a pastor? How will you be a director? It's promotion. You have you have earned it. I've gotten to this level. I'm supposed to be promoted to social level. And when you store their promotion, is you have they will lose hope. They cannot put in their best. They cannot put in their best. I have worked, let me tell you, when I was Minister of Education, two permanent secretaries, Dr. Ibe, Dr. Mwajuba, up to today, up to today, relate with me. Up to today, relate with me. Dr. Ibe and Dr. Wanjuba. Wanjuba is from Abia. Ibe is from Ida Imo State. In fact, as I came in here, they have been to see me as governor as, because I had a good working relationship. And when I came, I said, can you listen to me? I can't serve in a place where I cannot have signs of what we did, what we achieved. I can't. I must tell myself, convince myself. As a minister of education, what would you say you did when you were there? What input? What impact did you make? Right? And the only way I'm going to do this, open there, look. I don't want projects to be stalled. I don't want bureaucracy to stall our achievement. I don't want it. I'm not stopping you from doing your work, but what I would not like as I came into the office this morning, you saw me, I finished all the files. Not mails. Not mails. You, most of the things you see mails, uh, cost call, cost call, cost call, you ask if what is the relevance of most of these cost calls, or audience with you, or this and that. Vendor driven, I have an idea of this, I want to need to do this. These are vendor driven. I'm not interested in vendor driven. I'm interested in what we, in line with the Mr. President's agenda. It's not you coming with your own end. No, no, not doing that. So, I said, I don't want any file to stay a day longer. No, I don't want that. If I push out the file, you must also push it out immediately. When we approve our, uh, the, the payment, yeah, I look at it. Two days time, I call the DFA. Have you people paid? He said, oh, Want to send? You say you want to do what? I stay here and sign out the file. 
You don't want to implement it. You want to sell. You want to carry. You, you can't try that. You can't. Why should I have the minister sit down here and walk? And then you, and we're, we're looking for procurement, the other procurement uh, one day. But he went to take his daughter to school. What? A walking period? Taking your daughter to school? I said, look, this is, this is not acceptable. It is not acceptable. It doesn't matter the propaganda you carry. It doesn't matter where you come from. And I said, you want to issue the query. It doesn't matter. You can go and tell anybody it's because I'm from so so place. It's because of this. This is the only thing that I sell in Liger. If you don't use religion, you use uh, ethnicity. That's all. But you won't tell them the simple truth. I mean, tell me. How can? And as important as that department. You say, I told the acting partner that I'm going to. I call the anti again. Who is in charge of FCT? I do one. I'm the one. And this should be your last time you try that. So who's going to explain this now? That I want an answer to this. Who's going to explain it? So I relate to civil servants. Carry out your own functions. But don't tell me that you want to stall whatever we're doing or slow down whatever we're doing. Because at the end of the day, the people will say the government is not doing well. Yes. Every attack is on government. Who are the political, government? The political leaders? Will they say, they say will they say civil servant administration they are not doing well? The civil administration is not doing well. It's nobody will say. It's not what they will say. So why would I now sit here and as I see you conduct yourself in a manner that Nigeria, the public will be complaining that the tribal administration is not doing well? Why would I allow you to do that? I can't allow you to do that. And that's why I'm here. You, you, you're entitled to what you're entitled to, nobody will stop you. But you're also entitled to do the work and move speedily as I'm doing. If you see me keep fast here, then you know that I'm stalling the, the progress of the administration. But if I can come, spend from morning to 6 p.m., 7 p.m., to do the work, and then you will tell me you sent your, you took your child to, to school, then you will go to the school. Another person should be doing the, uh, the, the work. That is the simple truth. Right, that brings me to the next question because you talked about another person taking the job. And uh, on the 27th of September, you relieved about 21 heads of parastatal agencies and uh, uh, secretary of their job. Yeah. Particularly, uh, I'll make um, reference to two key um, uh, departments. Number one was um, the uh, Abuja Urban Mass Transport Company. During your familiarization um, interaction with the members of staff, I, I mean, I, I think that should be 24 hours after you resumed office, you asked, you specifically asked the MD of Abuja Obama's transport company, where are the buses? You asked him. And then, uh, of course, the Abuja Environmental Protection Board, the director, you told him that uh, he should get his drugs ready, that he can't be sleeping when the city is dirty. Eventually, it turned out that the both of them were among those you served. Um, can you give us an insight? Um, a lot of people criticized the way and manner the, you know, the sack came. I mean, it was a public holiday on the eve of that, uh, on the eve of the next day, the sack was announced. Tell me any law that establishes how somebody will be sacked, the way you announce it, the day to not be announced, should it be public or day? Should it be public? If you are sacked, you are sacked. There's no law that says you can be sacked only on working days. There's no law that says so. So what is the only who of uh, it was a public holiday? So if it was a public holiday, you will not be sick. <laughs> I mean, you follow the procedural way of yeah, something. Exactly. <laughs> 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 There's nothing. The, 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 the CRC had approved it for long. I just kept it. I just kept it. I monitor situation. And when I felt 
to my own thinking, I think it's time for everybody to not leave. Because they believe that nothing will uh, happen. So you have to shock them. And we shocked them. Some people went and organized, and we are dancing. Oh, the workers are crying. Oh, we love you so much. Hey, look at that. You don't think that you can come and sell that kind of a thing for people like us. If you like, come and let me know the cover. It doesn't matter. Honorable Minister, you have been very intentional. You know what I said is? Yes. As an appointee, even as a minister, I'm not an elected person. The, the, the CRC can wake up in the morning, relieve him of his duty. You must expect that. This is not tenured. The only tenure is that the president wants you. So you must expect it. You don't have to say, oh, I'm going to die. No. You better prepare yourself. Anything, anything can uh, have a political uh, appointment. It's something that you are not in control. Don't be too sure of it. When some other person has the power, then you must know that. It can be in the morning. It can be in the afternoon. It can be in the... In the public <laughs> day. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You've been very firm about your... I should say your idiosyncrasies and um, your actions. And uh, we've seen you taking not just cursory looks, but very critical looks at all the sectors. Have you looked at illegal mining in the FCT? We know that, for instance, uh, places like Karashi, Kuje, Ape, uh, Buari, Kuali, you know, among others, they've got precious minerals such as gold, you know, uh, marble, which are being extracted, you know, well, uh, yeah, quite yeah. You know, frequently. Well, and, and we understand that top shots are the ones involved. Mining in is on that what list? Under the exclusive list, not under the, the state. I know state, state can uh, stop uh, what I call illegal or this. What you can do in partnering with the Minister of uh, Solid uh, Minerals, you can partner together to tackle the illegal mining, which you have to protect, right? Even as a governor of a state. Even though that petroleum or oil is not an exclusive uh, list, that does not mean that if you see people doing illegal uh, uh, mining, you will not be able to report or try to stop it. But I have no power, per se, to say these are illegal people, these are not illegal, these are illegal people. I have no power. Because sometimes, too, when the, when the licenses are given, states are not notified. It's only when people come to report to you, you now go in there and say, look what I do here. So I think the President Minister of Sardinia is trying to have a collaboration with states and FCT to see how they can work together as to stopping this illegal uh, uh, mining. Like it happens in the oil sector which you know a lot of people are involved. So, so it happens in the, the solid mineral uh, area. So it takes a very robust collaboration with the Minister of Solid Minerals and state government and the FCT to be able to reduce yeah. the illegal mining of big solid minerals or the petroleum uh, uh, sources. Well, Honourable Minister, just to stay on what uh, Gloria mentioned, when we look at uh, the FEC meeting, we'll understand now it's going to be every Monday, and uh, by way of reminding you, you're part of this government, and when we are having this meeting, Nigerians also want to know what are some of the plans that the government has in place, you know, to really reduce the hardship, if not eliminate what people are going through. You know, this yeah. definitely the residents of FCT are part of Nigerians. So, what steps have you seen we have taken to reduce the effect of hardship in this country? Remember, well, I'm not the Minister of uh, Finance and Coordinating the Economy who has that responsibility to talk on the overall the picture of the economy of the, of the country because that is a uh, portfolio. But if you ask me here, 
since FCT is part of the, listen, what, what do we do to reduce the hardship? But one thing we must ask ourselves, what was the condition of the country before this present administration came? I'm being careful not to touch an area that people will say is political. I'm being careful. But what I will say are for us, what are the things we have put together to help our people? The president has come up with a palliative to reduce, to cushion the hardship. That is a, a short term. But in the long run, what is the president planning? Look at the policies he's bringing up. These are not policies that will uh, change everything overnight. It's not a miraculous thing. It's not a magic. There are policies that are hard, but at the end of the day, will benefit the country. You know, because of the way we have suffered, Nigerians have thought, look, within one month now, turn everything. I don't blame them. But all we are saying, look, these things are not done that way. It will take time. When the results come out, you will benefit it. I, I take an example when I was governor of the state. There were traffic congestions everywhere. So I called you, Rosbega, how do we reduce this traffic? He said, well, I'm going to consider this fly over here, that area, that area, that area. We do for fly at the time. The city will be shut down. He said, well, that is the sacrifice that the hardship. Come and see on radios. There's no abuse that anyone got in this world. Instead of him to tell us we want to steal money. And he's going to abandon the project. How can any reasonable man come to say you carry out four flyovers at the same time that people do one flyover in six years? He wants to do four flyovers in 16 months. How? Abuses of an abuses. <laughs> the same people, the same people, the same Nigerians, when they saw that even in 12 months, three flyovers are ready. In the 16 months, the four flyovers are ready. Have you been to that place? Oh, it's London. Oh, it's this. You fly like this, you come down like this. You fly like this, you come. This is not yes. But see, that's how much they are. Their fear is, of course, having lost confidence in government. That governments have come to tell them they will do that. At the end of the day, the of the day they won't do it. And then the hardship continues. So how do you not think that this one you are coming to tell us now will It's just a matter of confidence. That is all. That is all. But what are the policies the present government is rolling out will help to change things in this country? Yes. But this is the period to make sacrifices. Projects. Uh, you talked about uh, you know, looking at the uh, satisfying, especially the dictates of your principle. Uh, the president also wants to ride on the light rail, which he has said already. It's an infrastructure that uh, the citizens of the federal government's territory have been looking forward to for a long time. As it is today, uh, when you look at the big station and uh, you know the rail tracks and all, it's a grim reminder, a reminder of stalled projects. Uh, so <laughs> how would you, you know? Well, 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 well I, 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 you know, when Mr. President made that uh, statement before the annual conference of the Nigerian Bar Association, you know, he really meant it. And that was a signal to me, hey, you better do something. I don't want to hear stories. But I will tell you the truth about the concept of that. If, you know, really, to take our traffic, right, from the city, 
if that was done, first was done for year to year, year all those areas, it would be more uh, impactful. Impactful. But it was taken where you don't even have, you know, uh, population at the back of the cities, at the back of the villages. But be it as it may, we can't go back. It's a project that went, one of the projects that every day you pray that God let me not fail. Because there are landmines. There are landmines. It's one of the most difficult. The conception, everything was skewed against government. As I speak to you, the consultancy, so that when they got that about seven point something billion, the dollar component we can't pay. The what? Uh, another the thing that has been given, you cannot mm -hmm. give uh, excuses. We are working towards that by the grace of God that Mr. Pillow should be able to ride on the battle line. Uh, his first year in the office. In fact, we are going to FAC, uh, I mean, FAC, uh, on Monday to seek for approval for consumption of some of the roads in order to make the, the better land to function very well, where people can come into the areas where they can, you know, take the train. Because it is now, um, those communities that have the, that, we, that the train line will be helpful to them, cannot, but there are no roads linking. So we are going to fake on Monday to seek for the Federal Council approval for the immediate construction of these uh, of these roads. There are uh, seven lots, and um, yesterday I called the companies who were recommended before I came. I said, listen, this is the period we have. You tell me the truth. This is four kilometers. You are doing three kilometers. You are doing two kilometers. You are doing 1.7 kilometers. Tell me the truth here. Can you finish these roads before the before May? Can you finish this road before now? Luckily, we are going to the dry uh, season. So I need a commitment. I'm, I'm not here for this. I don't, I'm not going to send the executive secretary to go and talk to them. No, I don't do that. I want you to sit down and look into my eyes, eyeball to eyeball. Can you do this? Are you sure? Nobody takes our money and goes free. Because you can't. You can't. And they said, yes. Should I be happy that you would do it? Yes. And they one by one. But they all sat there. That's OK. I pray that the Federal Council will approve on Monday. And then we will fund you. So I consider it as one of those projects I may turn as emergency. But they are not emergency because it, the, the procurement process has been concluded years. And awarded. Some of them have been awarded. Only few that have been awarded. But it was stalled because no payment was made. And this is a very important real life project we're talking about. That these are the link rules that ought to have been done first. It was awarded. So, there are about two companies that FEC have not given the approval. I'm doing key of those roads that I'm taking to the Federal Electric Council on Monday. And those Jura ones that have been there and there have been no funding, I invited them there again. Okay, move to site. Move to site. I show you, you get your money by the grace of God from next week. But the, the, the point I'm making is the point I'm making. An important project of that nature. Whoever or those who uh, conceptualize it, 
How will you have material life without these roads? How? Where would the passengers pass from? The only place is that you want them to come to Abuja City. Do you understand me? That's the only way. If not, they have to come. They, 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 there's no need because they can't come. The only way they can come is by road. And yet you are trying to decongest the transportation system. Now, if you link up to the uh, train stations, all they need to do to drive to the train station and then the train takes them to the city. The communities are this way. The train now passed this way at the back. But if they have taken the first uh, slot to do uh, where this place, uh, Ecowas area, to Nyanya, you would have seen the massive the, the congestion. As a former, sorry, because we are really with um, we're having limited time. As a former minister of um, education, are you concerned about the educational st services and the FCT? Is it commensurate with the population? Is there a plan to it have? It will, it will, it will, it hold will, on. Is there a plan to have an FCT owned university? Uh, uh, you see, first of all, there is no state or FCT that will not allow the current kind of education. You also have to talk about the capital. Everything is not about, no, but yes, it's good to have access to education. But if you have access, no quality. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. FCC should be able to own university when the time comes. But not that this present, uh, 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 the present economic reality will face. It is not going to be possible. Let us see the ones we have. How far have we been able to make it function properly? Part of the quick things we are doing, we have chosen like 100 schools within the ADA councils, even though they are also going to be a primary function of the ADA uh, councils. But again, the children are our children. That's our own support to rehabilitate some of these uh, schools and put them in a good learning uh, uh, condition. So my, my plan, or our plan, is not just to be an established, let it be. It was in your time that they established a, a university. A university of what status? Some people in their state take for the university that has we have a state university, we have the federal university, we have um, federal college of education technical, we have uh, two polytechnics, we have two polytechnics, well, federal oil and gas polytechnic, right? Look at the numbers. That does not mean it's enough. Some people came to me, ah, why not establish a university, even if you're a village? I said, no, it's not a priority. So uh, if I establish it, if, so if I put my village, my people will love me. I mean, if everything should not be political, let us do something that is right and people will appreciate. The, scar the resources are scarce. The funds are not there. Why do you create more problems? Most of the times when I go to some of the universities, except some people, I mean, uh, states, you laugh. Just because you want to play politics that I establish that university, you can't believe what you are, what you will be able to see. So I'm not in a hurry to say that we have other teaching problems. We should be able to solve, to, to solve them. Other people will come and then begin to face such other problems. Okay, Honorable Minister, I have a feeling this might be my last point, and uh, it's unfortunate that. Um, uh, probably next time we'll be able to talk a bit about politics, you know, you're a politician. <laughs> but then, I do not live in Abuja, but I get this question, you know, where someone is concerned about what your plan is. Let me mention that particular area, Kashi Apo Road. Apo Kashi Road. Apo Kashi Road, that this has been under construction for years. I hope it's part of the three things uh, you're prioritizing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe he is living in London. See, this is the problem we have. Everybody was, oh, this is what I said. That's about what we're saying now. How can you award a certain number of roads without having the front? And how can we carry all at the same uh, time? 
when I was Minister of Education, I used to attend the principals of Federal Government College. I changed the budgeting system. Yes, I did. You know what happened? I called the principal and said, what are your priority areas? If you have an envelope of 100 million, for example, then you go and create 20 projects. You put 2 million, 1 million, 3 million. At the end of the day, you have not achieved anything. Therefore, this year, in my school, I want my dining hall, the classrooms, to be in very habitable condition. Okay, how much will it cost? It will cost us 40, 40 million, 80 million, for example. I still have 20 million. I'll keep 20 million for the maintenance of the other ones. This year, I have finished this project with this one. Next year, I take up another key project. So, what we are trying to say, we we'll look at all the options. The funds we have, which are the priority projects now. We have Otako General Hospital with Abandoned for years. Very important. We have the cultural center. Very important. We have all other routes. Very important. But the funds we have are limited. So, I'm not going to listen to my friend leaves a cashier pool. No, I'm not going to listen to that. My friend leaves so so place. Mm. We will sit down, gentlemen, looking at these projects now. Which one would that will stimulate the economy? Of, of FCT, well, and then we're back on those we projects. Appreciate, we appreciate this. I know we're completely out of time. We know that um, the projects are going to come, you know, one after the other, and we really have to wrap up at the moment. I was just wondering your culinary skills, you know, in the last few weeks, you know, just um, in one minute. My, my what? Are we going to see uh, your culinary you skills in the next no, few? No, no, are we going no, to see that, this let, let me in tell just you. one minute? Please. Yes, look, you see, so many people dramatize. Yeah, I, I don't like when. What is in cooking? What is the cookie? I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, I should go and call the chef to prepare. You see, some of us who are brought from the home where your mothers were cooking, you are made to stay in the kitchen. You make sure they, they prepare the pepper. You, the okra, you have to pound the okra. Some people may see it as a waste of time. But for me, it, it's very interesting. What you should know, let me tell you, when my wife had her, her first child in the United States, the day she came back with my first son, I welcomed my wife with okra and uh, okazi soup. Yes, yes, yes. I feel proud I can, I can, I can cook and I'm happy when I eat it. I feel uh, satisfied. No, 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 not to go eat uh, what you don't know, the magnitude of Maggi, what you don't know what this, and then because they want to make profit, they want to make profit, you eat it, I wouldn't do that. Thank you very much, Thank Honorable you very Minister. Much. This you is just much. a fine place to have this conversation. Um, it's been very insightful and engaging with the Minister of Education, Mr. Nyesum. You know, he used to be Minister of State for Education, actually, the Minister of FCT. Mr. Newsom Wiki, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And uh, on behalf of all of us, we wish you the very best. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, you too. Thank you.